So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to join us the very first uh, GW4 Water Security Alliance webinar. So thank you very much for turning up today. Uh, and apologies that uh, we canceled, we postponed our uh, webinar last week because some unforeseen uh, circumstances. But from this week now, we have a very full agenda. So we will have different speakers lined up, will share their experience uh, for uh, different uh, in different research area. And from this term, we have some slightly change of format because previously the webinar was hosted by Andy Schofield, but now he has moved to a different role. So we will be having a transition period at this moment. And later we will have our fresh and the YCDT students taking over to organize the uh, webinar series. But still we will have the weekly event and we are looking forward to have you uh, participation during the, all the event and we'll continue to share all this uh, upcoming event information to all of you and please uh, subscribe to our mail list and we don't we will not bombard your ma uh, mailbox we will just let you know what's coming up for the next uh, uh, webinar events and so the, and the other things that uh, all the webinar will be recorded and so will be shared by the GW4 website, also the CWS websites as usual. So it might be a slightly delay because the processing of video, but you will be able to see that all the past recording from our website. And so today we think uh, we I would like to thank uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Hassan Kanajapur uh, very much. He's uh, accepting our invitation to give the uh, uh, first talk of the uh, about optimization of ocean powered turbine for uh, seawater desalination. Uh, he recently completed his PhD at the Center for Water System at the University of Exeter. So it is a fresh, brand new research outcome he would like to share with all of us. So he will be giving the talk. And so if you have any question, you, you are more than welcome to put your questions in the chat. And then we, after Hassan's presentation, uh, he will be able to take your question and to answer them. And now over to you, Hassan. Uh, thanks, Albert. Uh, just uh, can I check everyone can hear me okay and see this slide? Yes, they are all very good. Thank you. That's perfect. Uh, thank you. Thank you for coming to this talk. Uh, as Albert said, uh, my background is in mechanical engineering, and uh, recently I completed my PhD in engineering at University of Exeter. Uh, in this webinar, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about a novel conceptual desalination system, which can be powered by a vertical axis tidal or VAT tidal turbine. The energy required for desalinating one cubic meter per hour is, is determined, and accordingly, a VAT turbine is designed to fulfill this amount of energy. I will explain how a combination of the Taguchi method and CFD modeling can be used as a straightforward solution for optimization of geometry of uh, tidal turbines. Freshwater is at the heart of sustainable development and it is vital for energy and food production. And most importantly for human survival itself. Water crisis is a problem from which many societies and the environment around the world are suffering, and it is expected to get worse in the future. According to the new report by WHO, by 2050, uh, uh, by 2025, uh, 1.8 billion people will be living in a countries or regions with absolute water scarcity. Several, uh, several policies should be adopted to mitigate water resource challenges, including uh, water recycling and proactive maintenance of water pipelines and distribution systems. 
Although these efforts are essential, they can only enhance the existing water supplies, not expanding new resources. Uh, wa water crisis in UK. Can you believe it? Uh, this figure shows that water availability indicators due to climate change and uh, population growth in, in the UK for uh, 2050, it can be uh, seen from this figure uh, that even a country like UK will experience water scarcity in the coming decades. But don't worry, we have solution. Uh, desalination is one of the best ways to expand the availability of water above what is available in the hydro uh, hydrological uh, uh, cycle. As you know, desalination is a water treatment process that removes salts from saline water to produce fresh water. Most of existing desalination technologies require huge amounts of energy, which is expensive in terms of environmental effects as well as money. While desalination is already believed an essential source of fresh water globally, its high cost is one of the key challenges of expanding it. The idea behind my PhD was, can we reduce this cost of water, not only using free energy, but also using optimization techniques to make the components cheaper? One of the technologies for desalination, for desalination system is reverse osmosis or RO. As you know, RO is a process where pressurized seawater uh, flows through a semi-permeable membrane, separating fresh water from saline water. By adding an external pressure to one side of the membrane, clean water will flow to the other side to restore the chemical potential. To ensure that water passes through the membrane, the pressure difference between the feed part and the membrane primate side should be considerably higher than the osmotic pressure. This working pressure of RO must be about three to five bar according to existing studies. It is obvious providing this pressure requires so much energy. Ocean power. Oceans are sources of sustainable energy, which have enormous potential for providing the energy required by humans. Compared to other form, forms of green energy, the stability and predictability of ocean energy makes it uh, much more desirable. Although ocean power de devices can be made commercially, most of them are in the earliest stage of research and development. Ocean energy can be divided into two major forms, wave and tidal energies. Uh, tidal energy takes advantage of natural ebb and current of marine tidal waters induced mainly by interaction of earth, sun, and moon gravity fields. Tidal energy is estimated to have a global potential of 120 gigawatt. Tidal turbines. Tidal turbines are used as a ocean power com converters to produce electricity. Although these devices have been designed for the generation of electricity, the same design principles can be used in desalination application to produce high, uh, high pressure water directly. This would minimize energy losses that would otherwise occur through producing electricity to uh, supply electrically powered desalination plants. The major weakness of tidal turbines is the high price of design and manufacturing. Traditionally, optimization of turbine geometry can be achieved by running numerous numerical models of the turbine, which can become computationally expensive. As the efficiency of these turbines increases, their cost of manufacturing 
the, the cost of manufacturing be becomes more economically justified. Design of the ocean power desalination system. This is the schematic of the design. The general idea is that we can convert seawater to fresh water by using ocean power. Please let me just explain the main components of the design and their functions. Tidal turbine. Tidal turbine uh, powers the high pressure pump. High pressure pump moves and pressurizes water from the sea to the RO unit and the water tank. Water storage tank stabilizes the driving energy. Uh, RO unit, RO unit desalinates saline water. A, a booster pump uh, pumps output water from energy recovery device to the RO unit. ERD or energy recovery device recovers the energy of water output of the RO unit. And finally, PV photovoltaic panel and a battery provides, uh, they provide the required electricity for the booster pump. So in this design, there is no need to convert uh, kinetic energy to electricity in a generator and then uh, electricity to a kinetic energy in an electric motor and finally use the kinetic energy to pressurize water in a pump. The kinetic energy is used directly to pressurize the water in the RO system. With the proposed conceptual design, the turbine uses tidal energy to run a water pump. And when the system has adequate pressurized water, the energy of movement, the energy of movements can be sorted, uh, can be sorry, can be stored in a water storage tank uh, to stabilize the driving energy. Energy required for desalination. Energy consumption uh, uh, for desalinating one cubic meter per hour using RO desalination system is between two to four kilowatt hour per cubic meter. We calculated the amount of energy consumption inside the RO unit as 2.4 kilowatt hour per cubic meter for seawater with salinity of uh, uh, 30 ppt. The energy usage for transferring seawater to our O unit and the storage tank uh, in the desalination system was calculated, which was about 0 0.3 kilowatt hour per cubic meter. So the design or O desalination system requires 2.7 kilowatt hour per cubic meter for producing one cubic meter per hour fresh water. So uh, now we need to provide 2.7 kilowatt hour uh, power by, by the tidal turbine. But before we design the turbine for the system, we need to calculate the impact of surface roughness, which has adverse impact on performance of the tidal turbine. So let's quantify the impact of surface roughness, and then we will design the turbine by applying these effects. And it is obvious we need more than, uh, a little more than 2.7 kilowatt hour per cubic meter by applying the effects of uh, roughness. Uh, so, as I said, some of factors affect the efficiency of the turbine during its operation. Solid particles, marine animals, and cavitation erosion can increase the surface roughness of the blades, which could affect turbines' efficiency. As the surface roughness of turbine increases, its power output greatly decreases. So we studied the impacts of the wide range of surface roughness as a turbological parameter on the stream flow around the hydro turbine and it, its power loss uh, as well. So uh, a comprehensive 3D computational fluid dynamics or CFD modeling uh, as well as an extensive range of experiments were carried out on a tight lens. <clears throat> uh, 
power coefficient is calculated at different tip speed ratios, both experimentally and computationally. It can be seen uh, that the numerical results are in good agreement with the experimental results. There is nevertheless a difference between uh, the CFT and measure results. The main reason for this difference is that the CFT simulations uh, are based on rigid body geometries that ignore the turbine blades hydroelastic behavior. Vibration and deformation can adversely influence the uh, performance of the turbine. In reality, the blades of tur uh, tidal turbine bend due to the pr uh, pressure of the edge. The power output of the deforming blade is lower than the rigid, uh, rigid blade. The power reduction is because of the change of uh, uh, because of the change of the pressure distribution on the blade. In addition, vibration causes increasing vorticity generated in the blade, in the blade tip, which, reduced, uh, which reduces the torque uh, of the turbine. The turbine, blade, uh, the turbine blades with six different surface roughness, uh, uh, roughness values created by rolled waterproof sandpapers with different surface roughness, uh, uh, using the surface uh, profiler device in the Department of Engineering of University of Exeter, roughness of the used sandpapers were examined, and you can uh, see a macro image of them here. Uh, as I said, I simulated the turbine with six different roughness. Uh, I provided for decrease with the roughness. And also results showed that the drag coefficient increases gradually uh, following the second order polynomial function with increasing roughness. Uh, uh, surface roughness causes uh, in increase in the drag coefficient and decrease in pressure coefficient, both of which reduce the output uh, torque of the turbine. So uh, to evaluate this the effect, the, to, uh, the torque of turbine is calculated in six different uh, average roughness. You can see one of the results here. Uh, based on this, the power loss of the turbine in different roughness heights was calculated. The maximum reductions in power output was about 20%. We applied this reduction to design the turbine. So let's back to the energy required for desalination. As I mentioned, changes in roughness of the blades can, can decrease the performance of tidal turbine by about 20%. Considering this amount of uh, power reduction, the turbine should provide 3.2 four kilowatt hour per, per cubic meter of energy. Finally, to minimize the effects of uncertainties, 0 0.2 kilowatt hour per cubic meter was added to this uh, as a confidence factor. Therefore, in the end, the turbine should provide 3.44 kilowatt hour per cubic meter. Uh, considering this energy, uh, the well-known equations of uh, vertical axis tidal turbines were used to calculate the initial parameters of VAT turbine. And you can see all uh, initial parameters in this table. I designed a three blade ver uh, vertical axis tidal turbine by SOLIDWORKS based on uh, the initial parameters. So now we need to optimize this turbine. We want to start to optimize uh, this turbine, uh, which we call it uh, ba baseline tur turbine. Uh, optimization design using Taguchi method. For optimization of turbine with genetic algorithm or similar optimization algorithms, hundreds of basic uh, numerical simulations are needed. One of the limitations of 3D CFD is that it is time consuming since for obtaining uh, reliable results, different parameters must converge simultaneously. A computational time of combination of the genetic algorithm 
with the uh, 3D CFD would be very expensive. However, uh, the Taguchi method can provide uh, a reasonable estimate of optimized parameters with just a few number of uh, optimizations. The Taguchi method is one of the powerful uh, optimization techniques in product design. The fundamental uh, principle of the Taguchi method uh, is to increase the efficiency of the product by reducing the number of tests required without eliminating any parameters. The Taguchi approach provides orthogonal arrays or OA for the execution of minimal tests to, in, to include a wide variety of variables for improved decision making. It also uses the signal to noise SN ratio to measure the output level, which is diverge from the target quality. In short, uh, SN ratio is a criterion for quality assessment and the OA, orthogonal array, is to provide minimal design parameters simultaneously. The target quality of perf uh, performance is a key factor in the Taguchi approach and must be indicated for each optimization procedure. In this work, the objective is to maximize the performance of the Taiga turbine. Uh, the power coefficient, or CP, which is an indicator of output power, can be calculated uh, from CFD uh, simulations. Uh, the, the process of identifying the optimal parameters can be summarized into seven steps. Uh, I'm going to explain uh, all these seven steps here. Uh, this is for optimizing the tidal turbine, but you can apply yet all these seven steps for, opti uh, for similar optimizations. Uh, step one, ob objecting. Uh, uh, definition of an uh, objective function and SN ratio. To define the objective function, a quality loss uh, function is determined to measure a parameter's uh, deviation from its target quality. Sorry, I lost my mouse. Yeah, to, to define the objective function, a quality loss function is determined to measure parameters deviation from its uh, target quality. This is the uh, our, uh, uh, quality loss function. Q QL is quality loss function. K uh, is the quality loss factor. YO is the observed response and YT is the uh, target uh, quality. Generally, in the Taguchi method, the SN ratio for each category of products can be determined by three different formulas. Uh, larger the better, nominal the best, smaller the better. Uh, the quality loss function in this study belongs to the smaller the better type uh, problem uh, class. The quality loss function can generally be converted into, into an SN ratio to measure the quality of a product. In the current study, maximum power coefficient, CP, is uh, as the quality target. Therefore, by replacing maximum power coefficient as target quality, the objective function can be defined as this, this uh, final uh, equation. Here, the maximum CP is considered as 16 over 27 based on the bets limit, which is a safe assumption. As it can be seen, the margin between maximum and optimum responses must be as, 
as small as possible for maximizing the SN ratio. Uh, maximizing observed response is equal to minimizing quality loss, which makes the noise sensitivity minimum. Step two, uh, selection of turbine factors and their levels. According to parameter design tests, an optimal set of factors need to be defined, determining the optimal uh, amount of the each factor. De determining the uh, optimal amount of each factor can be achieved by choosing uh, the uh, factor levels with the maximum SN ratio. In the Takuchi method, the goal is to find the uh, optimum combination of factors. In this study, four standard factors, which have significant effects on hydro, uh, hy uh, hydrodynamic performance of the vert vertical tidal turbine are chosen, including twist angle, A, camber position, B, maximum camber, C, and court radius ratio, So now we need to select some levels for each factor. The twist angle aims to minimize flow suppression, making positive lift at zero angle of attack to allow self-start in water. It also improves the performance of the turbine by increasing the blade's effective area. As the selected VAT turbine has three blades, the total twist, uh, twist angle of experiments uh, can be increased up to 120 degrees. Six levels have been selected for the twist, and, uh, uh, the, the twist angle, including 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and 120 degrees. The camber position in the knockoff family of airfoils can be varied from 0% to 90%. For investigating this factor, 70%, 45%, and 20% have been selected as levels of camber position. The maximum camber in knockoff airfoils can vary uh, from 0 to 9.5%. Uh, the, the levels of 2.5 and 5.5% are chosen for this factor. And finally, uh, the final factor is a court radius ratio, which we found it from solidity ratio. Solidity ratio is among the most important factors that influence the efficiency of the vertical tidal turbines. Solidity ratio is defined as the ratio of the sweep area to total blade, blade area of the turbine. The solidity ratio can be determined by this equation, uh, where sigma is the solidity ratio, NB is the number of blades, D is the length of the blade cord, R is the uh, radius of the turbine, radius of the turbine. Uh, this equation clearly shows that the solidity of turbine can be changed can be changed by altering the turbine radius to blade cord ratio or the number of blades. A smaller solidity means the turbine uh, uh, converts low water energy. In other words, when solidity is low, the output power is also low. Uh, on the other hand, with increasing solidity, the maximum values of lift and drag coefficients decrease. According to Armstrong and his colleagues, the solidity ratio should not exceed 0.5. Since the number of blades of the turbine is considered as three, a ratio is considered to be optimized as a representative of solidity ratio. Considering this, uh, considering this upper, upper limit, uh, in this study, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3 were considered as court radius ratio. Step three, construction of an appropriate orthogonal array. In the Takuchi approach, only a certain number of experiments is needed 
to test according to according to the orthogonal array uh, rather than all feasible models. Generally, the selected uh, optimization approach needs a parameter matrix with a variety of levels uh, and the par uh, parametric differences can be uh, analyzed. Orthogonal array is balanced to ensure that all levels of all factors are equally taken into uh, account. The possible orthogonal array for the total number of selected parameters and levels is L18. Accordingly, based on the constructed orthogonal array, instead of 162 cases, 18 cases will be analyzed to achieve maximum hydrodynamic performance of the tidal turbine by uh, four factors. Uh, step four, 18 different models according to dimensions based on the constructed orthogonal array are designed using SOLIDWORKS and simulated by ANSYS Fluent in, er in order to quantify the hydrodynamic performance of the turbine. Uh, the, the moment coefficients for a single revolution for the baseline case and other 18 cases are calculated. You can see the results in this figure. Then based on this, the power coefficients are calculated. You can see the results in the table. The highest average uh, uh, moment coefficient is 0 0.134 and power coefficient is 0 0.202, which correspond to case analyzing Taguchi results. Now we can calculate all the SN ratios of uh, 18 different cases with this equation, which I explained it earlier. The maximum, the maximum SN ratio occur, occurs at the maximum power coefficient, which is 8.232, which corresponds to case 12. The combination of twist angle of eight, uh, 80 degrees, a camber position 20%, maximum camber 5%, and court radius ratio 0 0.2. Uh, then the Taguchi method is used to determine the order of impact of the factors to be selected for the design. Uh, for this, the mean SN ratios for parametric design are calculated and plotted in this figure. Uh, to find the order of the effect of each factor, we need to check the difference between the maximum and minimum responses of each factor. This value for twist angle is 0 0.684, which uh, implies that twist angle is the most significant factor among the four tested factors affecting the hydrodynamic performance of the turbine. Uh, step six, assessing the interaction between turbine parameters using ANOVA. To evaluate the interaction of the turbine parameters, the analysis of variance or ANOVA technique is used. Interactions between the turbine parameters are very important and they should be considered in order to make the experiments and their analysis meaningful. ANOVA is an effective statistical method involving variance of obtained responses in order to perform different, uh, confident, uh, uh, different confidence tests. In other words, uh, an ANOVA technique can be used to provide a measure of reliability. Instead of analyzing the data directly, uh, this method determines the data uh, variability and analyzes the mean difference in quality of experiments uh, conducted. 
there are different classical approaches for uh, computing ANOVA for unbalanced data. In this study, to evaluate the interaction of the turbine parameters, the two-way ANOVA technique is used for the SN ratios in order to measure the interaction of each two independent factors. Uh, ANOVA interaction plot can be used to visualize the interaction between the factors in uh, factors. In this, in, in this uh, analysis, the interaction of each two factors is calculated according to the SN ratios. So I, provi I provided its ANOVA interaction plot here. As you can see, there are two major trends for interaction between each two factors, parallel and non-parallel trends. In parallel, uh, in parallel, either interaction does not occur or it is negligible, while in non-parallel ones, the interaction between factors occurs and it must be considered. This, uh, this ANOVA interaction plots illustrate that the major influence in the uh, responses is to the interaction of twist angle with other factors. Uh, finally, uh, final step, not final slide. Uh, I use a superposition method, which is an extrapolation technique to estimate all possible responses outside of the orthogonal array. There are 164 possible combinations based on the number of factors and their levels. We updated the uh, superposition equation to contain the interaction of factors by adding ec extra terms in order to provide the impacts of uh, relationship between any two factors. Uh, I explained this equ equation in my PhD thesis. If you would like, you can just take a look at it there. To solve this equation, a program was written in uh, Python the total possible SN ratios for uh, 162 cases are calculated. And the results uh, are presented in this table. The results show that the case 104 provides the maximum SN ratio, which was 9.456 in the combination of twist angle of 80 degrees, camber position of 20%, maximum camber of 5%, and court radius ratio of uh, 0.2, which was the same combination we found it in Taguchi. And it is kind of a validation for our Taguchi result. Uh, a new turbine is designed based on the optimized dimensions. You can see both turbines here, left baseline, right optimized turbine. I simulated the op optimized turbine uh, in CFT and the, the power coefficient uh, CP of optimized turbine was calculated as 0 20, uh, 0.21, which, uh, which is 26% higher than the baseline case. In addition, the, the optimized uh, model reduced the required material by 57% compared with the baseline model, indicating that the new uh, model needs less material. Uh, final slide. Uh, one of the fluid dynamics phenomena, which can be used to compare and analyze the baseline and, opti and optimized turbines is dynamic stall. To visualize the flow around the turbine, vorticity contours at azimuth angles in, uh, is plotted. And uh, I provided uh, two of them here. Uh, examining the vorticity contour plots indicate that the stream separation in the optimized model is greatly reduced compared to the uh, baseline uh, model, suggesting that the twisted and cambered blade 
with uh, will will be effective in regulating and uh, uh, in regulating the separating vorticities over plates by uh, suppressing a dynamic stall. In other words, the optimized turbine, which takes advantage of twisted and cambered blades, can suppress dynamic stall by uh, interacting with water in different angle of attack at each azimuth angle. In the baseline model, which has straight blades, the, the turbine interacts with water with constant angle, angle of attack. Uh, however, twisted angles, uh, twisted blades interact with water with different angles of attack at different points on the blade. Thank you. Uh, any questions?